Okay, the purpose of this video is to show in a very brief way how to take the three measurements you need to use the, the power of speaker bench or to take three impedance sweeps uh, so that speaker bench can calculate the advanced model parameters for you. Um, all the complexity is really buried kind of under the hood and from just looking at the manual, it, it might appear like you're asked to do something very complicated for data input, but I'm just going to show you that you just need to take three impedance sweeps. So to do that, you need some computer, some data collection system. So here I'm using a Woofer Tester Pro from Smith & Larson and a PC. This doesn't use any sound card directly. The, har the hardware is inside the tester. The tester also needs an amplifier. It's really recommended to, to have an external amplifier in case you're trying to measure very large woofer or subwoofer, in which case you should be using about a volt. I'll talk a little bit more about how hard you should drive the, the transducer for the test, but really you should, you should use an external amplifier because a USB-powered tester is really not delivering enough current to get a, to get a good measurement. Uh, you also need a, a driver to test, and you should download the, the, uh, the data sheet, the existing data sheet for the driver. And then, of course, you should always take notes, um, so have pencil and paper, and it's important to have a digital scale. So, computer, tester with amplifier, um, woofer or mid-range, uh, some paper and, and a scale, and uh, in addition to that, you need something to put on to the woofer. So we recommend you can use coins or washers or nuts and, and blue tack. All right, so let's get started. The driver we'll be measuring today is from SB Acoustics. It's the SB Acoustics SB15 NAC30-8. The 8 is the 8 ohm driver. There's a 4 version which would be the nominally 4 ohm driver. Now, I don't know that you can still get this silver aluminum cone. I think you can get what is effectively the same driver with a black cone, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, that's, that's the one. It's a pretty small driver, so not a lot of room between the dust cap and the surround to, to stick something on there, but we'll do our best. Here is the scale and uh, small piece of paper with masses of U.S. quarters, nickels, and dimes, and multiples of the masses. So here I am wearing a, weighing a U.S. dime. It's about 2.3 grams, and another dime also, 2.3 grams. So the known mass of the cone is about 10 grams, so we're shooting for roughly 10 grams. So here's four. It's 9.2, but remember the blue tack also has mass, so that will get us close to 10. Uh, interestingly, a Canadian dime weighs less. Oh, now I give it a thumbs down, but I shouldn't have done that. Just be aware that Canadian dime weighs less. There's a picture of the blue tack, and you don't have to use blue tack. DAP makes a product called Blue Stick, which you can use. So now apply equal amounts or approximately equal amounts of the blue tack to each dime. Um, sy symmetry is always important. You want all these masses to be as close as possible and you want to position them on the cone as symmetrically as possible. Um, and also make sure the attachment is is good you don't want it's possible uh, depending for cones with a lot of curvature you can the coins may buzz but in this case it worked quite well I put quite a lot of blue tack on there and although I didn't really do a good job of one of those coins so it's not perfectly symmetric but never mind and you can see the data sheet on the bottom with the model number of the driver and I connect it to the power. And now we can switch to the screen capture of the tester. Uh, some of the settings are here. I've just typed in a comment that this will be the first 
measurement with two masses. The sweep will be from 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, 400 points, quarter of a volt. Sine sweep, which is the most accurate, but it can be quite slow, and there we go, starting the sweep. Now, this tester is quite slow, so I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. You can just see it starting out just below 8 ohms. And now this is a few minutes later. It's gone through the first uh, resonance peak just above 30 hertz. And as I said, it's a, it's a very slow process, but we just have to wait. So this first scan is getting pretty close to finished. It's at almost 3,000 hertz. Uh, 1,000 to 3,000 is a really irritating part of the frequency spectrum, so this is only a quarter volt, so it's not too loud. But if we were testing at one or two volts, Returning this would be to annoyingly loud. the tester screen, we can see that the first sweep is complete. So that's done. And we have to head back to the driver now and remove half of that mass. So I disconnected it from the power. Interestingly, I, I'm, I generally find it's, you have to be more careful removing the mass than when you put it on. It's very easy to really pull the cone or even to damage the cone when you take the mass off. So it's a little more stressful taking it off. And in particular, if you leave it on overnight with the blue tack, it can get even worse. So here we've removed two of them and we'll connect it back to the power in preparation for the second scan. So back to the tester. I'll get the second scan going. I'll leave a comment of one mass instead of two, even though it was from four to two, I'm calling it here two to one, just to confuse you and we run the sweep. It's no faster than it was before, so you can go do something else for a while. And not much else to say. You can see that the uh, inductance rise is very low in this driver, so perhaps this was a really good choice of driver to illustrate the power of the advanced, advanced model. So now we've started the second sweep after removing two of the four masses. So um, sometimes in doing this test, I, I first do a dry run with no mass, and then with all four, and then with two, and then with no mass again, just as a sanity check to see that, um, you know, I, you, in principle, you should get more or less exactly the same result if you measure with no mass at the beginning and the end, but often it won't quite be true, especially depending on how sensitive, um, how, how sensitive the driver is to you, like jacking around with it. So, and this, this is also why you should really be careful to not push too hard on the cone when you're adding and, and removing the masses. You have to be, you have to be very careful and very patient. So, uh, it's we see it's starting to deviate from the uh, the four mass measurement, and what will happen is the resonant frequency will be higher. It will shift up in frequency, but also, and this is one of the reasons why we want to use the uh, advanced model, is the impedance peak will be generally higher. The, the effect of damping will be lower, so the impedance peak will be higher. And this is an effect we Here can we are capture back at the tester the model. to see it slowly creeping its way through the second measurement with half the mass. And we just let it go until it finishes. So here it's finished, and now I have to remove the remaining mass to leave the unweighted driver. And again, like I said previously, it can be tricky to remove the masses if they've been sitting there for a while. So do your best to be careful. I was actually a little worried this measurement wouldn't be great because you can see I'm actually stressing the cone a bit. So can't emphasize that enough. Be, be patient. 
All right, so now there's no mass left on the cone and we're ready for the final measurement. So back to the tester. And I'm going to set up the third scan, adding a comment of zero mass. That one's not as confusing as the other definitions. And I start the sweep. And there it is, uh, just past the resonance. So this is the actual impedance of the driver. Remember that the other two impedances are not the impedances of a weighted driver. This is the actual driver impedance now. And there it is, complete, all three. And you can also see a sanity check. All the high frequency results are the same because the cone mass really doesn't matter at very high frequency. So all three runs done. Just running through the settings again. and showing you that it was a quarter volt. All right, so with everything done, one has to save, or in this case, export the results to a ZMA file. I'll just, I think I've sped this video up a little bit. I don't really type this fast, so I just made a new directory, and I'm going to save the three measurements that I'm done, and these three files that I'm saving are going to be the files so there's the first one, no grams. These files that I save will be the ones I'll upload into SpeakerBench. So let me export the next one. So now I'm exporting the 5.8 gram measurement and then I'm exporting the 11 gram measurement. The last thing that remains to be done is to weigh the added masses. I start with the first two masses that I took off the cone, 5.7 grams. Then the second two masses that came off the cone, 5 point, a little bit more, 5.8 grams, but it doesn't matter. They don't have to be exactly the same. As long as the values are known precisely, that's all that matters. So now the total added mass, the M2 you would enter in the web app, is the sum of the two. And M1, which would be, you know, the half of the added mass measurement was 5.8. And then, of course, the M-weighted driver is zero. So to get the total mass, we get out the calculator. So the total added mass is 11.5 grams, which is pretty close to the data sheet value of 10. That also doesn't have to be exact as long as the values are known. So I'm just writing down here that the SB acoustics estimate is 10 grams. Notice in the data sheet, there's the 10, but it also says including a correction from radiation impedance. Okay, so we are done. There's three impedance scans with uh, total added mass, full added mass, half the added mass, and no added mass. So there's a shift in the resonance frequency, but as frequency drops, the impedance peak also drops because of viscoelastic effects, because of damping, which isn't constant in frequency, but a, a damping that depends on frequency. All right, measurement's done.